into tomorrow's Republican convention is whether or not state GOP chairman Ed Cox will even survive the week. There have been numerous reports suggesting party members could bring forth a vote of no confidence against the chairman, and there's some speculation that a few could push for a new chairman to be elected, although it's not clear how that might work. Among the names floated as potential replacements is my next guest. Ray Meyer is a former state senator from the Rome area, and he's joining us tonight from Rome to talk more about the upcoming convention. Thanks for your time. Sure. Great to be with you, Liz. So uh, let's get that out of the way. Are you interested in being chairman? <laughs> well, I, I'm going down to the convention. I'm interested in the future of my, my party. and. Uh, uh, I, I, the Republican Party in, in New York uh, clearly has an important role to play moving into this election to change the direction of this state, and that's what I'm interested in. Ah, uh, that's not no. <laughs> it says you it's caught not, that, didn't you? Yeah, I did catch that. I did yeah. indeed. Um, do you want to expand on that? I mean, I know actually your name's well, come I, up I, a few times, right? Well, uh, over, over a period of time and in the past for various personal reasons. Look, I, I think what everyone would prefer is, is for this convention uh, to result in a unified party. Um, I, I'll make full disclosure here. I'm going down as a delegate in full support of, of, of Rick Lazio. I think that's what the party needs to do is to coalesce around uh, our candidate for governor. And that's what's critical at this stage, not necessarily who, who the chairman is. Well, changing horses in midstream certainly would be uh, difficult for, um, for any party. But uh, sure. part of the problem here is that a number of people are angry at Ed Cox because they, he recruited a Democrat, Steve Levy, who has switched parties, but that hasn't fully taken off yet. It's not uh, formal, formally done. What are Republicans in your neck of the woods recognizing that you are, in fact, a Rick Lazio supporter? What are people saying um, about Ed Cox, about the decision to back Levy? You know, I personally am very fond of Ed Cox, as are, I think, you find most people active in the Republican Party in this state. Having said that, a lot of us are scratching our heads over this. Um, in last January, he uh, had said publicly that he would work with Lazio. Lazio was the presumptive nominee. Uh, then the whole Levy thing surfaced. And, and frankly, you know, comparing this to and saying that, oh, well, Ronald Reagan was a, a Democrat. Well, Ronald Reagan uh, labored in the vineyards for a while before he tried to, to move up and, and run for governor of California and then for, um, and then for president, finally. The Levy conversion was last minute. He's still not an enrolled Democrat. And, uh, you know, look, as a former Republican state senator, I think uh, it would be good if uh, most uh, Assembly Democrats could be sentenced to serve a term as county executive. They, they might learn some things, as evidently Mr. Levy did. Okay, so uh, also then at this point you've, uh, you've not just got Levy and Lazio, you actually have four d different candidates for governor. You have Carl Palladino, he's a Buffalo businessman, and of course Myers Mermel, who just recently switched uh, tracks and decided to move from the lieutenant governor race into the governor's race. Uh, what do you make of all of this, and uh, do you believe that it's actually part feeding into what people are upset about regarding the chairman, that he has allowed so much so much chaos, if you will, or, or so much competition into the party. Well, I, Palladino is clearly, um, you know, sort of his, his, his own person. His base of support within the party, anyway, has been confined to Erie County. I don't think the chairman had much to do uh, with that. There have been some indications that the chairman may have been involved in the Brumel candidacy shifting from LG over to, to governor, since he uh, seemed to know about it before Mr. Murmel himself uh, announced that candidacy. And, and, and I think the Murmel candidacy is part of what has a lot of us sort of scratching our heads about Ed, wondering what, what the reasoning is. Yeah, it's um, if you had been chairman or if you were chairman, what would you do differently? I mean, one of the problems here is that Republicans have been known traditionally for their discipline, and this is supposed to be a Republican year where you're seeing all of these Republicans all over the nation uh, winning in various different special elections, and it looks like New York is on track to sort of break that streak. Well, I, I don't think on, on the eve of the, the kind of election where, where opportunity is, is so apparent uh, that you go uh, courting someone who is still a Democrat and will still be a Democrat come this uh, come this election day. I, I think 
uh, really sort of letting things take their course in the party would have resulted at this point with the party having coalesced around around Rick Lazio, who, who is and, and, and will be a very effective candidate uh, for governor. I think this constant muddying of the water makes it difficult to coalesce, raise money, and to get moving on the main event, which is the November election running against Andrew Cuomo. To be fair, though, I mean, there has been a lot of upset regarding the top of the party, of leadership of the party, since really the Pataki years. I mean, there's been a lot of discontent, or even maybe really even since, since Bill Powers was chairman. Would you, would you not agree with that? Well, I, I, I think that's been true to some extent uh, over the years. There's been a feeling, I think, if you talk to the grassroots folks, that there's been very little attention to um, building uh, the party on, on the county level and the community level, very little uh, attention given to uh, electing uh, local candidates. Th that discontent has, has uh, been uh, running deep in this party for a number of years. And yet, actually, you're seeing a lot of success among Republicans at the local level. You've seen uh, a number of special elections that have been won in the Assembly. You've, you also saw uh, the Republicans do very well in Nassau County um, in the last election cycle. So certainly at some local levels, they're doing, uh, they're doing fairly well. Uh, just at the state level, it seems to be problematic. What are you well, expecting going into this convention? Well, there's all kinds of, of, of speculation what to expect about going. I mean, some people have suggested it's going to be the equivalent of, of a political Gallagher concert and that those of us <laughs> in the front row should uh, bring our tarps and heavy rain gear. Uh, I think this, uh, look, I've been around a while. I was at the 94 uh, convention, mm. uh, which was hotly contested between George Pataki and Herb London. Uh, I expect this to be a, a, a hotly contested uh, uh, convention. I expect that Lazio is going to come out of this with well over 50% uh, of the vote. And I don't really expect that you know, a number of lifelong Republican activists are then going to vote to let an enrolled Democrat um, primary our endorsed candidate. But yeah. this does, let's face it, play out against the backdrop of some discontent and some feeling that we should have been better organized, that we should have had a more organized approach to coalescing around two U.S. Senate candidates, that we should have been better organized in, in terms of striking you know, some kind of, of understanding with our, our friends in the conservative party about a possible coalition ticket. So uh, these are things that are going to play out over the next few days in New York. Now, the, interestingly, in 1994, if I remember correctly, wasn't that the year that uh, John Faso stepped aside to allow uh, uh, George Pataki to be the, the, the gubernatorial nominee? I mean, it, there were deals that were broken at that convention that you know played out then for many many years going forward which ended up being in John Faso getting the nod in 2006 because it was finally his turn to do so do you expect that's what's going to happen is it possible that's what's going to happen there will be some kind of deal that will enable I don't know Rick Lazio to be the nominee but then maybe Steve Lieber runs for something else well, those kinds of things are always possible. The, the vote for governor will take place uh, at the early stage of, of, of the convention. Some of the other offices will play out near the end. But um, this may be very different. This, remember, in the 1994 convention, uh, there was a fellow named Alphonse D'Amato who was the United States Senator and Bill Powers was state chairman and he and D'Amato were extremely close. Um, this year, at this particular school play, there's nobody around to play the role of Al D'Amato mm. and, and Bill Powers. So it's a very different kind of scenario when you have that very kind of strong leadership at the top in the Republican Party. Well, I, I think this just may play out as it does. It just may play out. Well, that's in part because Alphonse D'Amato, who's now a lobbyist, is actually helping raise money for Andrew Cuomo, the Democratic nominee. And, and while he has endorsed Bruce Blakeman, one of the Republicans who's running uh, against or wants to run against Kirsten Gillibrand, he's not expected at this convention. And, and I don't believe George Pataki is expected. And I'm not sure that, that Rudy Giuliani is going to show up. So none of the big names are expected to show up. Uh, at this convention, but you will be there and we will be talking to you <laughs> <laughs> much more. Um, I really appreciate it, Ray Meyer, and we'll be catching up with you again when we uh, get down to New York City. Liz, we'll see you in Manhattan. Take care. Bye-bye.